if Latin America is opportunity, um, I think there are some areas where problems will still dominate the agenda. Um, in, in other parts, it's going to be more about how to seize this moment and to uh, make the U.S. benefit from what's happening in the region. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the importance of Latin America. From Mexico to Argentina, Latin America is booming with its many expanding economies, vast consumer markets, and key natural resources, Latin America is entering a new age of economic and political strength. No longer a collection of banana republics, Latin America offers the U.S. many vital partnerships. Senior fellow Mauricia Cardenas takes us through Latin America, country by country, issue by issue. Very few people know that Latin America is the largest trading partner of the U.S. More goods are sold to Latin America than anywhere else in the world from the U.S., which means, you know, this is a reliable market. So that's why I think these two um, regions are, are integrated, both on the political level and in the economic level. Let's take a look at Mexico, certainly an ally to the United States, but fraught with problems. There are the border issues of uh, immigration, drug trafficking, and crime from drugs. What's our future look like there? In the case of Mexico, still the problems that will dominate the agenda. And the problems have to do with drugs, migration, and the flow of arms and weapons from the U.S. to Mexico. Um, how is that going to be handled? Um, I think we're going to see more of the same for some years, which means more support from the U.S., to better train the police, the military in Mexico, to have a better judiciary, judiciary system, um, hopefully better control in the border on the way south in terms of the arms and the weapons that are so easily accessible in the border states uh, and that go to Mexico uh, uh, every day. One of the things that can strengthen the ties between the United States and Brazil is trade. And key in that trade um, paradigm is China. How does this all work out? It's good to have Brazil on the side of the U.S. on this issue of China. And I think that's, that's something that uh, people here in Washington welcome a lot, that uh, an economy uh, that is also an emerging economy, is facing the same problems that the U.S. has faced for many years. Brazil has a new government um, since January 1st of this year, a new government that has surprised many for the good. Um, started with a language that was kind of tough on China, uh, rightly so, because Chinese uh, uh, exports are really uh, taking away a lot of jobs in Brazil, especially in the manufacturing sector. And still looming in the background in Colombia is the drug trade and the insurgency. So is Colombia a stable government? Colombia has been a key ally for the U.S. for, for many years. I mean, uh, there's no doubt that uh, no country embraced the war on drugs in the way that Colombia has done, uh, which was something that, of course, helped Colombia, but it was also very important for the U.S. domestic agenda. Colombia has had a remarkable transformation in terms of growth, in terms of uh, reducing crime, etc. Um, and Colombia is also a major force in terms of population, nearly 45 million, um, a large economy, potentially a very large market for U.S. goods. Venezuela is a huge oil producing country. It has been under the leadership of Hugo Chavez for the last 12 years. No friend to the United States. What does the future look like between the United States and Venezuela? Venezuela is really a country that is under a major, a radical uh, transformation in terms of, of what's going to happen in politics, in the economy, etc. Um, Hugo Chavez uh, has managed to destroy the Venezuelan economies. The, Vene the Venezuelan economy has been contracting for now three years. There is no investment, private consumption is falling, 
And this is a big contrast to what's happening elsewhere in the region, where the economies are, are growing. Elections are going to take place in December of next year. And, um, and people think that uh, he may lose the election. Now, where is he going to surrender? Where he's going to give up power in a peaceful way? Uh, uh, according to the Constitution, that's an unknown. Mauricio, Cuba is undergoing massive changes now, which obviously will take a number of years to play out. But what does this changing environment in Cuba mean? Trade with Cuba, of course, it's another interesting possibility for the U.S. Once the situation normalizes, you add another country close to your border uh, that can be an effective supplier of oil, pharmaceuticals, uh, even some services. Change can take place to the benefit of the U.S. economy. Latin America is a huge expanse with many wonderful and natural resources. And Mauricio, you say that energy is the new agenda between the United States and Latin America. Explain that. Oil production is increasing in countries like Brazil, Colombia, and of course in the future they're going to continue be, uh, being important suppliers of the U.S. But most people are interested these days not on, on non-renewable, but on renewable energy. Um, and here we have the biofuels uh, that are produced uh, all over the region these days, not just in Brazil where the whole movement started, but now countries like Paraguay, Colombia, Jamaica, Central America are important producers of biofuels. And then there is the potential of developing alternative sources of energy essentially solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy. Uh, but that needs investment in research. So what these countries want is for the U.S. to support uh, initiatives like uh, establishing research centers that uh, will develop new technologies and will make those technologies cheaper, more efficient, um, and, uh, and of course in joint ventures uh, with the US. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, or iPhone, go to brookings.edu/mobile.